This is Rhonda Brooks of Farm Journal Media, and I'm here today outside Rochelle, Illinois with Ken Ferry, Farm Journal Field Agronomist. And Ken, I know we're doing a, a custom corn and college event today, and you're going to be talking to farmers about evaluating uh, their corn. Uh, what are some of the things you're going to be telling folks? Well, we're going to go through what I call the fundamentals of evaluating a stand, going out there and looking for the uniformity, uh, everything from emergence to seed singulation, and looking for uh, anything that is present in their field that could help them improve on for next year so I kind of am a big believer in doing a strong evaluation and, and getting uh, year counts and population uh, recorded so you can go from year to year to know if we're doing a better job so part of it's going to be going out there and assessing what they have right now for a crop um, like we are in lots of the state for instance we're trying to figure out how much some of these guys are oversold in the real dry area so mm -hmm. giving them some good assessments as far as um, you know what are what are some variables they could use to manage or, or take a look at you know what's what's there to come for yield and is there anything they could have done different for next mm -hmm. year that maybe eliminate some of those yield losses. Are there one or two specific things that you could tell growers uh, watching this that you'd encourage them to get out and do at this point? Well, right now I'm going to encourage them all to get out and, and get a serious ear count. And, and we talk a lot about plant populations, but it's really ear count where yields come from. And to see, you know, how big a drop they've had from their planted population to their ear count. Mm -hmm. uh, the industry standard's about 13% drop. Uh, our goal, you know, is to get these guys in, a, in a somewhere in the 6% drop range. So uh, if we got a lot of barren plants out there, we need to really evaluate the crop and make sure it's not uh, something other than the drought uh, that, that could be triggered, you know, what they're looking at. Is there anything that you're seeing that's showing up repeatedly as you look in fields? Well, there's a lot of inconsistency this year, finding a lot of 12 arounds and amongst 16 and 18s around, and most of that goes back to the widespread issue we had with rootless corn this spring. Okay. So that corn that was struggling this spring, it did affect its ear set, kernel set, and uh, in the consequences of it, we're struggling with some smaller ears, which are going to make harvest a little more challengeable. We're going to have to you know, work with our stripper plates and try to make sure we can harvest as much as uh, grain that's out there. Okay. What about as as growers are looking at hybrid selection for next year? Is there anything that you're telling them to be mindful of? Uh, I mean, it still comes down to genetics and picking the right genetics for your farm. I think they're, they're going to see something totally different this year. They're going to see hybrids that can handle heat, that can mm -hmm. handle drought. Mm -hmm. uh, you're probably going to see yields swing in favor of the big broad leaf hybrids that are kind of pendulum in, in their nature where they did a better job of canopying mm -hmm. and, and more height to them versus the short statured upright hybrids. But uh, don't throw a hybrid out because of 2012 if it's got a performance uh, history. You know, realize that this was a this is a year where anything that can handle the dry weather better, uh, you know, is going to be in the running, and it doesn't mean that we're going to have a dry year next year. Okay. Uh, I also I have heard you say though that that sometimes these drought conditions do come in 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 threes, and that uh, next year it potentially could be dry. Definitely could be, and in, in you know as we prepare for next year. A lot of questions about how much corn on corn do we want if we're going to have mm -hmm. another dry year. And no doubt corn on corn uh, is going to struggle in any dry year due to the issues that we have with decomposing last year's crop and the toxins that are given off. Um, and I'm, you know, setting our growers up to say that, you know, let's just go ahead with the plan, do their tillage or whatever they're going to do in preparation uh, for next year. But if these tie lines aren't running again by the time a freeze-up comes around, I'm not so comfortable then with, with continuing with corn on corn because you're relying then on your April, May rains to not only refill the water uh, supply out here but also to you know get us through the, the next year. So um, I'd like to see some more water in these uh, subsoil situations mm -hmm. before I got maybe uh, you know too wound out on the corn on corn side. It takes a lot of water to raise corn. Right. Okay. Well, thanks for talking with me. I appreciate it. appreciate the information.